Let's be radically honest. There's a reason why you decided to become the professional or entrepreneur that you are today. Is it safe to say that it wasn't to be away from those you love or sacrifice yourself and your health while doing it? What if you could create the life and business of your dreams without working harder? What if stress and overwhelm were a thing of your past? Entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce is here to guide you through letting go of comparison and imposter syndrome so that you can stop making a living and start creating your epic life. Hello, hello, ho, and welcome to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. I I am your host, Ranchal Van Bryce. I'm super excited to be here with you. Today's show is The Science Behind the Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. One of my favorite books and one that I actually study and use on a regular and daily basis in my own personal practice and with my clients. Um, the Science of Getting Rich was first published in 1910. It's one of the most popular books when it comes to attracting wealth. The subtitle is Attracting Financial Success Through Creative Thought and is often called The Secret behind the book and movie, The Secret. And as I said, this is one of my favorite books in the library. Uh, I'm going to explore to you the uh, explore to you. No, I'm not going to explore to you. I'm going to explore with you uh, why I believe um, that this is such a great book. And also why that riches are and wealth are elusive for so many people. So I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about that. But before, before I do that, who the heck am I? You know, to um, last week I shared this as well. I'm going to say it again. It, to be completely transparent, this is probably one of the most difficult things to share with you uh, of all the things that I talk about. And uh, when people say, what do you do, Anshal, or who are you? And it's not because I don't have the confidence to say, but I'm a serial entrepreneur, a serialpreneur. I love business. I love everything to do with business. And I've been blessed to have many businesses. In fact, I've, I think I'm on my 14th business right now. Um, I had eight going at once for about 10 years. So it's not that they're opening and closing. Uh, it's not that at all. It's that I, I open several at once. I've been a coach and consultant for about 11 years and often business owners seek me out because what they're doing is no longer working. They've tried everything and it's not producing the results that they want. The entrepreneurs uh, that I work with have uh, a few things in common. First and foremost, what they want is more time and more money freedom. And I, I really think that every business owner wants that. I think for myself as well, liberation to me is something very exciting. And what I love about working with my clients is I love to bridge the gap between uh, where my clients are and where they want to be. But also there's a new way of doing business and there's a, a new way emerging. And so I like to bridge the gap between that because I believe that we should be able to create a life and our business or profession is a vehicle to that life. And I believe that flow and ease are our natural states. And that flow and ease does not mean it's challenge free. It just means when we're facing the challenges and obstacles, we are absolutely a one. Okay. I believe that the relationship with yourself is the most important and that's not selfish. And I believe that radical honesty is the building block to creating abundance and prosperity. And excuse me, while I wink really lots because I had something in my eyeball. And lastly, um, I believe we can have it all without sacrificing our health and wellness. Um, and without sacrificing our relationships with the people that we want to be with. And so if any of that resonates with me, I do encourage you to connect with me. So as always, I love starting my show with a question for you. So when you hear the word rich, uh, and so let's talk about specifically the science of getting rich. When you hear that word, what thoughts are going through your head? Is it a trigger word for you? Um, are you comfortable with that word? Do you have judgment around that word? Because this will be really revealing. Um, you know, the first time I heard the word rich, uh, I had this association with a couple of different people in my life. One, true story, Richie Rich, the comment, uh, the comic book, right? And just all the things that Richie Rich experienced. The second one was someone um, in when I grew up, uh, was rich and uh, they called her a rich bitch. So that was my second association that I had with rich. 
And the third one I had was rich was impossible. And it was again, because of the, of the environment that I was raised in, you know, my mom and dad talked about being wealthy. My mom and dad talked about prosperity. My mom and dad talked about achievement and success, but rich wasn't a common word that was used in my household. And so I, I personally had a lot of uh, tr uh, triggers around that, but I had a lot of judgment about what that word meant. As I started to explore this book, and this book was introduced to me many, many years ago when I had the Curves franchises, and I forgot about it and rediscovered it in 2018 when I decided to open up uh, my coaching practice uh, in Red Deer, which is where I'm currently located right now. So I think the first thing is just check in with yourself. Do you have judgment around that word? And are you willing to explore the limiting beliefs behind that word? When uh, Wallace D. Waddles is talking about the science behind getting rich, he's actually talking about there's a scientific method. There's a methodology. There's principles behind getting rich. And so as I started to uh, prepare for the show, because I work, um, I work in this book as a practice meaning on a regular basis, this book is with me wherever I go. And I read from this book uh, at least three or four times a year, a year, a, a month, my goodness, um, a month. And there's 10 principles in this book. So, okay, so my producer is probably going, oh, please, please, Rachel, do not go over 10 things. No, I will not. I will not review the 10 principles today. Uh, I wish we had a couple hours. I might be able to zip through them in a couple hours. Uh, I will, though, share with you kind of the beginning principles of the science behind the science of getting rich. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about why is it such an elusive um, thing for, for so many people? Why is abundance and prosperity and being rich kind of elusive? So let's start here. Let's start with there are three motives for which we live for. Um, and this is according to Wallace D. Waddle. So all of this information I'm sharing with you is from the book, The Science of Getting Rich. So the three motives that we live by are the body, the mind, and the soul. Makes perfect sense, right? We are a triune being. Um, Wallace talks about not one of these is better or holier than the other. Each is as desirable Um Neither one of those should take uh, precedence over the other. There needs to be a balance of all three. And so part of our prosperity and abundance is linked to having a balance between the body, a balance between the mind, and the balance between the soul. A lot of entrepreneurs, right, we uh, will utilize the body through business, meaning, you know, we're acting in our business, we're using our body uh, in, to sit at a desk. We're using our body, our mind, or possibly our soul for marketing, for sales calls. But the other piece of this is to, is to take care of the physical body as well. You know, to basic principles, stay hydrated, eat healthy, and everyone's definition of healthy is different. And so I won't go into that. Eat healthy for you, whatever that looks like for you, and sleep. Uh, there are other things you can do. I have a meditation a practice that I use and I have a breathwork practice that I use. Those are the extra things that I do to keep my body healthy. That allows me to be more creative in my business. So these three motives, this, the body, the mind, and the soul are the beginning pieces of what uh, Wallace brings into when he's talking about the science of getting rich. Right away, he introduces these things. And what he's saying is the key to success, this is um, um, an interpretation, a quote-ish, right? The key to success, the key to richness is understanding that our life is, uh, is the desire for more expression, right? So our life is made up of a desire for more expression. And the key to success this, is this richness in understanding this, right? So being rich, having a fuller life is not just about money. It's actually about abundance and prosperity, right? Uh, richness in life. What would be richness in life? What could that look like for you, right? So if we look at the way that right now we're expressing life, 
we look at the results, we look at our circumstances, and we look at our environments, we know then what principles, what beliefs, what limiting beliefs that we are, that we have, our values that we have, that we're carrying through, that are being expressed through our mind, expressed through our body, and expressed through our soul. So our life is really this um, complete expression of what we're bringing forth, right? And we really can't be happy or satisfied unless our body is living its fulfillment, our life is living its fulfillment, right? Every function, our soul, our mind, right? And whenever we are experiencing um, dis satisfy a dissatisfaction a dis uh, being dissatisfied I always have such a hard time with that word right really what we can do is take a look at that and then what we will know is that there's this unexpressed possibility of ourselves and an unexpressed or unperformed function right so meaning our body's not functioning 100 percent our mind might not be functioning at 100 percent our soul might not be functioning at 100%, or we know that we're meant for more. We, we have this desire for more, and it's this innate desire that, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, that's actually planted by what Wallace D. Waddle calls the formless substance. Uh, he also refers to God. Um, you can use the words that resonate with you, whatever word that is. So we have this innate desire for more, and what happens is we want to express more. We want to have more. We want to do more. And we want to be more. But there's a part of us that we're raised in an environment to have guilt or shame surrounding more. Uh, I heard a lot when I was growing up, uh, up actually up until my probably 40s, um, which was, can you never be happy or satisfied with what you have? And I always felt really bad when I thought, no, I'm not ever satisfied. I always want more. Now, th there was a double-edged sword going on for me. One of them was this desire for more was because I felt like I wasn't enough, uh, that I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't pretty enough, I wasn't tall enough, athletic enough, that I didn't have value and worthiness. So that's part of it. But the other piece of it is, right, my, my soul right? My connection to divine self always wants more. So that's why I'm referring to this as double-edged sword, that we're not meant to be satisfied with just what we have. We are meant to want more. The other piece of the, the double-edged sword is to make sure it's a desire versus a want. And that can be a little bit of a mind, wah, because we have to really start being radically honest with ourselves, which goes back to my introduction, be really radically with ourselves about why do I have this um, desire for more? Is it a desire for more? Is it, or is it because I'm feeling less than I'm feeling a lack and I'm moving towards this expression of wanting more? So we can go back to whenever there is an unexpressed possibility or an underperformed function, we will have an unsatisfied desire. And the other piece is desire is possibility seeking expression or function seeking performance so does it not make sense then that we would want more i mean that makes perfect perfect logical sense makes perfect logical sense and so uh just before we head into break i'm going to uh quickly share the first principle in the science of getting rich right so the first principle in the science of getting rich is that thought is the only power that can produce tangible riches. And it comes from what's called the formless substance. So thought is the only power that can produce tangible riches from the formless substance. Now in uh, quantum science, the formless substance is called the quantum field. So the stuff that everything is made up is from this formless substance. And it all starts with what's happening both in our mind, right? Our brain and also in our heart, right? Or for some of us, you'll have a gut instinct 
So there's brain power in your gut. So this is one of the greatest things is we can start tying in all of our body, all of our energy centers, which is important in order to manifest the desires. So let's go to our first break of the show. And when we return, we will continue to, to discuss the science behind the science of getting rich. You are listening to Ignite Your Many success. of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchel Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchel Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. Again, my name is Ranchelle Van Bryce, and you are here with me on Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle on Inspired Choices Network. And before we went to break, I was sharing with you the first principle under the science of getting rich. Um, and so that first principle is uh, thought is the only power that can produce tangible riches from the formless substance. So every form and process you see in nature is the visible expression of a thought. So every form and process you see in nature is the visible expression of a thought from its original substance. So as we start to think about things, we add some emotion to it, right? We, we create this, um, this idea and it goes out in, pings the universe, I always say, goes into the formless substance. In science, it's called the quantum field and things start to, uh, to transpire and work in your favor and things will unfold as they should. So this is the first principle and such a very important principle because some of the things that happen is we believe that we, um, oh, how can I say this? We believe that we make things with our hands. We believe that we make or achieve things in business. Um, we believe that we convince people to buy. We believe in the marketing funnel. We believe it's because our, our success comes from marketing, sales, and operations. That's part of it. I mean, uh, uh, that needs to be a piece of it. But when we're talking about the science behind the science of getting rich, this is the scientific piece. Everything starts with a thought. The iPhone couldn't be, I'm just looking at my, on my desk. The microphone couldn't be here without a thought. The computer couldn't have been here without a thought, right? My water bottle, the mouse, I mean, my, the books, they all start, iPhone, all starts with this thought. I also shared with you that the key to success, the key to richness is understanding that, I, that our life is um, the desire for more expression, right? So really success is about, we have this desire. We have this desire to express ourselves and success can come from that. And whenever there is this unexpressed possibility or underperformed function, we will actually find ourselves to be in an unsatisfied state, right? And desire is the possibility seeking expression or functions seeking performance. 
So I talked about before we went to break, you know, it makes sense then, doesn't it, that we have this desire for more and it's this innate desire. So we shouldn't have any guilt or shame about wanting more. But I want to explore a little bit about the that the thought of um, power can produce tangible results, that the thought power, right? We live in a world of doing, right? And it looks like the doing has the results. So it looks like the marketing happened, the sales happened, the operations happened, the business idea happened, the website happened. And it was because we did things I'm gonna go like this. And there's, this is part of the truth. This is part of the illusion. But again, it had to start with my thoughts around the business, my thoughts about what should be on the website, my thoughts about what I should be expressing here, right? We forget how powerful our mind is. We forget how powerful our soul is, right? So when we forget that, when we forget how powerful it is, when we forget that we, who we need to be, we will always go into this realm of doing. What do I need to do next? What's my next task list? And then what happens is uh, you're busy, but perhaps not productive, right? We live in this illusion that um, when I do this thing, so when I do a, have a marketing funnel, uh, people come through my marketing funnel and I get, I'm using air quotes on purpose for those of you listening to a podcast or the a radio live or later on, get air quoting, get, I'll get clients. That's actually not how clients come to you. We manifest clients. We manifest clients through our mind first. We manifest clients through our connection to divine source energy. We manifest all of the relationships that we have through our soul, through our mind, and then through our body. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time later on talking about that, but we need to take action as well. That's the body piece. So let's talk about um, some of these fundamental uh, propositions that Wallace D. Waddles is talking about. So first of all, it's to, I guess, to accept. Mm, if you can accept, be an awareness of accepting that there's one original formless substance. So whether we call that creator, divine intelligence, we call that formless substance, quantum field. But if we move into this place where we can accept that and we can accept that all things come, all thinking stuff comes from this place, then we can also be in awareness of the amazing opportunities that we have as a human being. Because we as a human being, we are acting as the thinking center. We're a feeling center and we're a thinking center. So everything comes from within us. I'm gonna say that again. Everything comes from within you. I'll put it in that, right? Everything comes from within you. So if we have all of this thinking stuff, which all things are made and which in its original state permeates, penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe, and that's a quote from Wallace D. Waddles, right? Then a thought in this substance produces the thing that is imagined by thought. <sighs> that's big, <laughs> right? But a thought in this substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought. That is absolutely huge because we can imagine so much. And in fact, there was a study done at Harvard ooh, years ago. I'm sorry, I can't give you the exact date where there was um, a group of piano players, right? Who were practicing the piano and they had, you know, wires uh, cooked up to the brain and they, the, the, uh, everything lit up in the brain. There's this brain waves, this brain pattern that came when they were practicing piano. And then there was this other group, this uh, part of the same group that practiced the piano in their head and the same wavelengths, the same brain patterns lit up. There's so much evidence other than just that one study. There's so much evidence to show us that whether we imagine it or whether it's reality, again, air quoting, uh, the brain doesn't know the difference. Your reticular activating system doesn't know the difference. So everything that we desire starts at this place. This thought form goes out to th the formless substance. Uh, we're pinging the universe, right? Basically is what I always tell my clients. We're going to ping the universe. So 
when we're talking about this one piece, right, these fundamental propositions of the first uh, piece of the science of getting rich, that thoughts become, basically thoughts become things. So why is this so difficult for people? What, what, what makes this one principle um, so hard for us to, I guess, deal with, imagine, handle, work on? Well, we, we all are programmed with beliefs. Some of them are limiting beliefs and some of them are empowering beliefs. And it's really about which thoughts have more space, right? Which thoughts have more space? So if you're going through life and you're thinking that all these things are happening to you and, uh, and you forget that everything happens for you, you come from a place where I, I refer to as my victim cloak. When I'm wearing my victim cloak, why is this always happening to me? And I don't understand this. And, and money is so, you know, this, and it's uh, so hard to make money. And, and I can't find clients anywhere. And that darn Facebook algorithm, you know, such a pain in the butt. It's so hard. And all of those limiting beliefs. So when we think about, if we go back to this, where thoughts become things, right? Those thoughts go out to this formless substance, we ping the universe. What mixed messages are you, are you sending the universe? I think that's really the key. What mixed messages are you sending the, the universe? This is the, uh, where awareness is so very important for us uh, to understand what it is that we're feeling and what it is that we're saying. Because um, here's the thing. You may say one thing, but feel another. And the universe can actually pick up on your emotions, can pick up on your feelings, right? So if a human being is a thinking center and is capable of pinging the universe, we can cause the creation. We are the creation, the formation of the things that we want to think about. What are you thinking about? Where are you spending your time? What's the first thought that goes through your mind when you wake up, right? Um, other than mine, I have to pee, right? So uh, I'm just keeping it real. I thought that's so important. I love to keep it real. So other than that, other than I have to go to the bathroom, what's the first thought that you have, right? And so I know when I was really struggling um, and facing bankruptcy, the first thoughts that I always had was uh, how scared I was that I just really, I didn't know what I was going to do. I don't know what to do. I don't, and I kept on saying to myself, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And so of course, because I kept on telling myself that I don't know what to do, the solution never came. I was telling my brain how to think. And I was, I was pinging the universe. I don't know what to do. So basically it's like the universe goes, oh, well, eventually she'll figure it out. But right now she doesn't know what to do. So we're not gonna send any solution because she doesn't really know what to do. So these, it's so important to me in awareness. This is the radical honesty they talked about. It's so important to me in awareness of what actually it is that you're thinking, right? So we have these basic principles, right? That we're talking about. So let me summarize this. So there's a quote, there's thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe. A thought in this substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought, right? And it is, there's, there's a lot to digest, right? So a person can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon the formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. And I call this pinging the universe. So let me just use it in regular words. Three principles. One, there's a thought. Two, it permeates and penetrates the thinking substance. Three, the thinking substance takes this thought and turns it into form. This substance, right, is also known in science as the quantum field. Okay, so now that you know that, I'm having a thought, sending out to the formless substance, the thinking substance takes this thought and it's going to turn into form. What the hell do I do? What the hell do I do? Right. And we're going to talk about that at our next break, which is coming up. You're listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle Van Brace on Inspired Choices Network. 
Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with Entrepreneurial Success Coach Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchell Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. So excited to have you here. So before the break, I was sharing with you a little bit about the science behind the science of getting rich. And specifically, I was talking to you about three basic principles and I uh, lay them out in a very simple language. So there's three basic principles um, around the, the uh, thought becomes things, right? There's a thought, it permeates and penetrates the thinking substance. The next one, of course, is the thinking substance takes this thought and turns it into form. This substance is known as the quantum field, <sighs> right? There's a lot here. I mean, it's so simple. Uh, the concept is so simple, but the wrapping our head around things and understanding it from a logical perspective so that we can integrate and embody it takes time. I, and I think that's the piece of it. I mean, um, I'm sure you've heard over and over again. I mean, certainly I have in the world of coaching how uh, sometimes manifesting happens overnight or it feels like it's happening overnight. And sometimes it just feels like, you know, the Groundhog Day by Bill Murray, right? That, that same day over and over again, that same challenge over and over again. And that certainly can be frustrating, right? I think what, for me, when I really started to embody uh, the science of getting rich, when I really became aware of what this was, what, um, what I started to see and feel was certain experiences I could move through and other, ex uh, move through and let go. And other experiences that I had really was that kind of rinse and repeat. And until I decided to be radically honest and until I decided to look behind the curtain, right, of what was going on, what was the truth in it, things stayed the same. And up until that point, I often asked why. But, you know, when you ask why, your brain, is an, as a great search engine, goes back into your past and gives you all the reasons why something's happening. And because my, my past was uh, filled with a lot of, uh, was, I mean, a lot of things I didn't want, it's also filled with some amazing experiences, right? But when I was asking why, there was some really icky points in my life. Icky, the official word. And so I kept on coming up with the, the reasons why this is happening. And it was really like, I'm not enough. I'm not smart enough. I suck, right? It, I am not worthy. I'm not valuable. So when I started to dive back into the science of getting rich and I started to to live the principles, I started to integrate the principles and embody the principles, which I said to you, there were 10 principles, um, things started to move. Now, how I did it, um, I took one principle a month 
and I worked on one principle a month. The other books that I use are Raymond Hollywell's uh, 11 the Spiritual Truths, right? So that's based on the, the um, universal laws. And so there are 11 laws. So if there's 10, there could be 11 principles with Wallace D. Waddles, The Science of Getting Rich. There's 11 laws. And there's a couple more books that I use. And so basically for one month, I would took one law and one principle. And I read it every day and I asked myself, how can I integrate this? How can I embody these principles and these laws in my life? And that was when I started to really see some movement. Now, does that mean that my life, yes, it's ease and flow. Does that mean that I don't have challenges? Absolutely not. But it certainly means that I look at challenges differently. And when I have my groundhog day, it really is because I'm looking at through an illusion. I'm looking at through this lens of that I'm doing something wrong and that I, what I need to do and what I would encourage you to do is don't look at it through the lens of what am I doing wrong, but look at it as what is the truth in this? What is this experience trying to show me and share with me, which I think is, is huge. So if we, uh, if we can accept that thoughts become things because what we do is actually a direct result of what we think. Now, let me back that up because I, um, I don't even, I don't think I made that statement. So your way of doing things is the direct result of the way you think about things. So your results, your environment, your circumstance is a direct result of the way that you think about things. And the way you think about things is connected to your beliefs, whether they're empowering or limiting and connected to your values, right? So it, your thoughts become things because what we do is a direct result of how and what we think. So to have things differently, to uh, have different experiences, to have them the way that you desire, you will need to acquire the ability to think the way you want to think in order for you to have the experience that you want. My mentor asked me all the time, who do you want to be, Ranchel? I knew what result I wanted and I was doing so much. And he kept on saying to me, you don't have to worry about doing, you've got the doing down pat. Who do you need to be? And this is something that I ask myself on a regular basis. Who do I need to be in order for me to do or have? Who do I need to be in order for me to be, do, or have? Who do I need to be in order for me to be connected to this thing that I desire, right? I know, I know how powerful we all are. I know how powerful our mind is, our body is, our soul is. So if we, if we understand the powerfulness of who we are and we start looking at, okay, so what kinds of things do I need to think? What are the thoughts? What are the feelings? so that I can permeate, right, the thoughtless, the, uh, the thoughtless or the formless substance, so I can permeate and ping the universe, so I can permeate and ping the quantum field, how do you need to think differently, right? The other principle behind this, I guess the other point behind this is to think the truth regardless of appearance. So, to think the truth regardless of appearance. What does that mean? Well, the truth is you're brilliant, you're amazing, you're abundant, you're prosperous. The truth is you have access to everything that you desire. The illusion is that you don't. The illusion is that you don't have time. The illusion is that you don't have money. The illusion is you don't have love. The illusion is you don't have the relationship. And it's all an illusion. And it's an illusion because you're not thinking or seeing the truth, right? So if we go back to what is the truth of this, if we go back to the truth of who we are, right? So we are uh, creators, we're manifestors. Now I, I have a, a strong spiritual practice. So I would use words like, I am connected to divine source energy. I am of divine source energy. I am one with nature. I am one with divine source energy, right? That's how powerful that I am with. If I didn't have a spiritual practice, I would, um, if I was looking at the truth, regardless of the appearance, I would go back into science. I'd go back into the quantum field and, and think about what that looked like.
point. Because each one of us has a natural and inherent power to think what we want to think. We all have a natural and inherent power to think what we want to think. And a belief is simply a decision that we made a long time ago with enough evidence to solidify the belief. So if you want a different outcome, if you want a different result, then what you need is a new belief and you need a new evidence to support the new belief. But if we think in accordance to appearances and we don't speak the truth, then we're going to be the victim of our circumstances over and over and over again, right? Now, what's really important here is, you know, when, um, when it comes to the truth, so I'm going to, I'm going to talk specifically about actually manifesting money, manifesting cash, because the, the truth is that we have access to an infinite law of supply. Now, one of the things that drove me crazy when I was learning how to integrate and embody the universal laws, one being the universal law of supply was that, the, so the truth of the matter is I have access to all the things. My bank account doesn't always reflect that, right? Even now, my bank account doesn't always reflect that. There's things that I, that I want to do. And I might look at my bank account and go, oh, isn't that interesting? At this moment in time, it appears that I don't have the money in my bank account to, so I'll go to buy my property in Costa Rica that I want. Right. I don't at this moment in time, it looks like in all appearances that the money to buy the, uh, the property in Costa Rica is not there. But that's that's the, that's the illusion. Right? Now, what's important and what I like to share is that I think it's we're not going to I don't believe in bullshitting myself. Right. So I don't believe in like, you know, the magic fairies and I'm going to like, you know, it's suddenly going to appear without me having to do something. I believe in action, but I believe in inspired action and inspired action is much different than doing things out of scarcity or doing things out of fear. So we're going to, we, we talk about, we're going to move into inspired action. So we want to think the truth regardless of the appearance, right? We also want to look at the isness of the situation, but also know that that's the illusion. Right. So I know I have faith that the illusion is that the money is not in my bank account for Costa Rica. I also have faith that as I'm thinking about Costa Rica and I and I wouldn't be so cool, we could do a show and I could be in Costa Rica live. I think that would be so much fun. I can think that and I put that thought I'm pinging the universe. It's in the form of substance. This is what I want. Right. This is what I desire. And so I know full well that the universe is conspiring with me. I know that my thought is out in the quantum field and things are moving towards to have that happen. I also know that I need to take inspired action. So there might be an opportunity that might come forward. It might look like an obstacle, but I need to take inspired action. So this is why I'm sharing is to think according to uh, what you know, right? Regardless of the appearance right? Think about what you know, and uh, regardless of the appearance, right? Every appearance in the visible world will actually produce a corresponding form in your mind, which observes it. So be careful, because if I looked at all the evidence of what I don't quite yet have, I could put out into the universe that it's not happening, right? Or I might have a story behind it's not happening. But what's going behind like that golden curtain? What's going in, what's happening in the form of substance? I don't know. I can't see it with my naked eye, but I can tap in and tune into how I feel. I can tap in and tune into my spirituality. I can tap in and tune into my knowledge, my information, my education, right? And I can tap into all of those areas, knowing full well that if I want a different outcome, I need to be different. There's the body. I need to take different action, inspired action. There's the body. I need to think about things differently. There's a connection to my mind. And I need to feel what my soul wants. So that's how we bring in the soul, right? So this science of getting rich, this, this one, and I've, I've talked about one of the 10 principles, right? Gives us this starting point, the starting block to creating anything 
and everything that we do desire. And we do this by looking at the reality of our situation, knowing that there's an illusion behind it if we're not happy with the results and ask, what is the truth in this? Rather than getting caught up in the, I don't have time, I don't have money, I don't have the education, I don't have this, I don't have this. Rather than getting caught up in what you don't have, rather than asking why, ask, what is the truth in this? All right, so we're going to go into our third break of the show. Again, I want to thank you, whether you're, you're here live with me or you're listening afterwards. Thank you so much for joining myself, Ranchelle, on Ignite Your Success with uh, Ranchelle. And you're listening to me on Inspired Choices Network. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach, Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone, to today's show, which is the science behind the science of getting rich. Again, my name is Ranchal, and you are with me on Ignite Your Success with Ranchal. Um, before I go on, I want to invite you to next week. Next week's show is uh, talking about the key to your success. Uh, what I've noticed is success seems a little inconsistent and elusive for many people. And during the show, uh, we're going to talk about why that happens, the what behind it, and how to move forward. Um, and you can talk about some of the things of preventing this elusiveness of success. Before we went to break, you know, we were talking about, um, I mentioned that there's 10 principles behind the science of getting rich. I talked about one principle um, and, and to kind of tie that, tidy that up into one sentence, it's your thoughts become things. There's a whole bunch of science that goes behind that. And so when we think about thoughts that become things, I think what's important is for us to, as we're, as we're um, ending our time together, you know, uh, in this last bit of the show, last part of the show, is to remind yourself that if you, um, to have the things that you want, you are going to need to acquire the ability to think the way that you want. And this is the first step, right? And I would even say a pre-step before that is, how are you thinking now? What thoughts do you have now, right? Uh, I also mentioned before the break that we need to think uh, the truth regardless of the appearance. And that what we see, the emotions that we feel, are often an illusion. And so we need to kind of step back and ask what the truth is, is that the truth is in this. If we go back to what I originally talked about, like that there's a thinking substance, a formless substance, where all things are made. If we can move into that, kind of lean into that principle, if you adopt that as a, as a thought, uh, a value, perhaps even a belief, you can let go of all doubt and fear because you know then you can create what you want to create because you understand the principle behind this. You can grasp the truth that every thought held in this form of substance becomes a form. So if you don't like your outcome, you don't like your results, you don't like your circumstances, you don't like your environment, it's as simple, and I say that with a kind of a smirk, it's as simple as changing the way you think about things. The difficulty, I, I believe the difficulty in it is not being aware or honest about how you're currently thinking about things. So in real life, what does this mean? It means that you can change what you want 
by changing how you think. You can change a lack or poverty by knowing what the truth is, that poverty is an illusion. Um, it's just an appearance. A lack is just an appearance. Lack of time, lack of money, lack of love, lack of whatever is just an appearance. Now, we can't deny that we're experiencing it because that would be silly, right? We can't deny that our bank account maybe isn't where we want. We can't deny that we're experiencing maybe a health challenge. We can't deny any of that. But what we can do is own that the experience has everything to do with where we're coming from and how and the place, the thoughts that we have, right? And that our beliefs are a little insidious. And so when we become aware of that, we can be focused on the thoughts. So I mean, and I and I think I got I think I got distracted with saying, what's the first thought that you have when you wake up in the morning? And I'm gonna encourage you tomorrow and actually for the next seven days um if you're willing to play right uh willing to play this game i'm going to encourage you every morning the moment you wake up and you open your eyes or the moment you're not even in your eyes or maybe not even the moment you are in awakened state what's your first thought right i trained my brain to have my first thought be i am so happy and grateful now that now Gratitude is one of the principles. I won't go into it, but gratitude is one of the principles of the science of getting rich. Gratitude is one of the pieces of science behind the science of getting rich. So what are the thoughts that you have? As you're laying, you're waking up, what's the first thing that happens, right? When you, um, your morning routine, like, so, so what happens when you first get up, right? Do you hit the snooze a couple of times? Um, I'm a slower waker upper. So I know that I'm going to, I'm going to hit the snooze. Now there's lots of data that suggests that I shouldn't hit snooze. And I know that I'm going to. So I've accepted that I'm a slower waker upper. And so I'm going to hit the snooze twice. And in between this, uh, uh, this state, this kind of like relaxed state, I start doing my I am and I'm so happy and grateful now that statements. I start moving into my practice of gratitude, right? I'm aware of my thoughts. Right. And I have people around me that I've surrounded myself so that if I have um, not the greatest thoughts, I was trying not to swear, <laughs> so not the greatest thoughts. Uh, I have people around me who will say, oh, wait a minute, that's an unusual thought for you. So that I can be in awareness of some of the situations or maybe some of the limiting beliefs that I'm still experiencing. Right. You know, one of the things that I, um, I talk about a lot, you know, in my one-to-one uh, -one coaching practice is our desire for whether we say wealth or richness or abundance or prosperity is simply the capacity for larger, uh, for a larger life seeking fulfillment. We're, we're seeking fulfillment. And again, I'm bringing my spiritual practice into this, right? God is seeking fulfillment through me. So I can let go of the guilt and the shame, right? I can let go of the stories of when I was growing up about wanting more and having people question it, whether that was um, someplace that I should be, right? And I can look at it and go, am I wanting more because I desire more or am I wanting more because uh, I don't feel like I'm enough? That double-edged sword that I talked about at the beginning of the show. But imagine your life, and if, if you approached your life as if God was speaking to you, God was whispering you, creator, divine, intelligence, whatever word you use, and was whispering this, um, seek more, desire more, right? And really was encouraging us to live the principles of abundance and prosperity. Would you be more open to creating more? Would you be, would you be more open to all of the things that are possible? If you knew what I know, which is God has my back. Everything that I desire was placed there by the God of my understanding and therefore is available to me. Thank you so much for joining me this week.
Thank you for listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. Ranchell returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold, be brilliant, be you.